training facility where we talk about fighting training and events it's the fight mixer show where you can hear about all the local and world combat sports happenings get ready it's time to gear up and square up because we're going live live on the fight mixer show What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part two of the Fight Mixer. We are here with the bare knuckle queen herself, ranked number one in the world at one to five. Miss Christine, the misfit. How are you doing today? What's up, Jay? Just chilling. How are you? I'm doing good. Not too shabby at all. And you know, congratulations! And I forgot to congratulate you. Uh, you won in September, September 11th. Big mm -hmm. win. What have you been doing since then? Good. I'm just. Uh, I have a little strain in my arm, so um. Just babying that for right now, and just um, trying to help every, everybody else around me give back a bit while I'm down, and um, train people, and just keep my game, my name in the game, keep my head in the game, you know. Yeah, and passing down your knowledge to everybody else, and I've seen your training videos, and you're doing a great job with all these different students, both young and old. Um, yeah. So getting back on topic, you know, because the reason why we we got you on the show is because. You posted about podcasters saying, oh, Faith Van Zandt can beat you. And I highly disagree with that. But uh, is there any talk yeah. going on with that? Or what, what, what's going on? What's shaking uh, behind the scenes? There's <laughs> the talks are saying just people never fight Paige Van Zandt. So the thing is, is like, I don't want, like, I don't, I'm not calling Paige out. I'm not, there's just not my level for one. She's not even had one uh, bare knuckle fight. Um, she's not even a boxing background. She is not even my level. So when I have podcasters saying, I don't address her. I'm not going to talk shit about her. I don't have anything to say like that. Um, she's great for the company. I want bare knuckle to grow. I want nothing but positive light shed on us. So like this retard of a podcast guy is just trying to get clout or pussy. I don't know which one it is. Both maybe. But yeah. saying that Paige Vincent can beat, beat me, and I'm just like, it just irks me a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm sitting back, I'm out right now with the injury, and I can't, I'm the type that's like, I'm a little uh, aggressive in my approach to <laughs> representing myself, I guess you could say, because I'm the only person that really markets myself, I feel like, you know, so I have to do it my way and get my name out the best way I can and then someone says that like it just is irritating you know what I mean and and I try not to even address like why am I gonna address Paige I'm never gonna yeah. fight her you right. know it's never it's not gonna happen you know but I would I would personally take it as a compliment too because now you're number one you're on top of the hill you sit at the throne and you had such a you had such a long career I mean you were undefeated in Muay Thai you went to amateur mixed martial arts you fought for uh, the great Jeff Meyer uh with uh tough enough uh, and then you went to uh, to Victa, and now you went to BKFC, transferred over from mixed martial arts to BKFC with you know a great record, fighting uh, some some killers. And now you sit at the top of the throne. Don't you find that like as a compliment now, going from where you were to now you, where you are now, that people are actually putting in the same light as who people would consider as a very marketable name coming from the UFC. I mean, you know, now right. you're you're at the top of the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love that I found my niche. You know, um, MMA wasn't my thing. Um, I really hated training it. I didn't. I didn't excel in MMA because I hated the, everything about it. You know, I love stand up. Like I respect MMA to the fullest. It's it's tough. It's hard to uh, study so many different um, uh, disciplines. I just didn't. It wasn't for me. But um. Yeah, I just, I love bare knuckles. 
it's really it's 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 um it's hard it's hard to do because you know when you go in there you get hit or you hang her or it hurts either way nothing everything is pain in this game like yeah. when you hit you know when you're jabbing with gloves i mean it's just hurting that person you know what i mean like when you're jabbing with no gloves it's ouch 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 you know what i mean so yeah um you just have to learn <laughs> how to endure the pain and I love it and I love it because physical work is my forte. I love hard, hard, hard work. And really I love mental warfare. So it's, yeah. it's, that's why fighting, I love fighting so much. So, um, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that, um, Bare Knuckle came, David Feldman created this, you know, um, I just hope that my image doesn't hurt me again. Cause that's where it hurt me. I, when I was, I was a undefeated Muay Thai fighter. My image hurt me. Then I went to MMA. My image hurt me. You know what I mean? Like everywhere I go, it's just a, the way I look and the way I carry myself. People, it's a turn off, I guess, for marketing. So it's, I just hope Dave, Dave's been really good with me so far, you know, but you know, I see what's going on right now. I see all the, right. the girls that are being promoted right now. You know, so it's but, like, oh my God, here we go again. Yeah, but I, was, uh, I was at the event in Daytona and I watched you put on a clinic, so no, nobody can doubt your skill. I mean, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't, the skill can't be doubted, but it's all this beauty here that, and, you know, so I don't know. I, I just hope it doesn't, it doesn't stop my, my progression as an athlete again, you know. I wouldn't say that it would hurt or be a deter. I mean, everyone needs – Linus is a big name in, right. in the UFC. I mean, everyone is looking for a Mike Tyson. Everyone's looking for that right. that type of – you know, someone that's going to put on a clinic every single fight. Someone's going to put on exciting right. fights. I, I think Barry, Barry Knuckle fighting, and to, to your point, I, I think you definitely found your niche because it, it definitely needs a stars. And you're part of that. You're, you're a big star now. People are looking forward to watching you fight, including me. I mean, I I, I I feel from a point of view that everyone's looking for a Mike Tyson or a type of you where, you know, somebody that's always going to put on an exciting fight, you know? Right, absolutely. That's what, and that's what I study. So that's, like, when I was coming up, I was studying Mike Tyson, Chris Cyborg. You know, those are the people. That's why I'm, like, those are the people that I really, like, took in. So, like, their style and their, their work ethic, that's just go, go hard, hit hard be strong you know what i mean so <laughs> that's that's exactly what um i wanted to be and that's what i became you know yeah and, and how long is your recovery time uh how long until we can uh you can see you and uh back in the ring i think may it's gonna be may? a minute yeah Holy it's shit. gonna be a minute yeah yeah it's gonna be a minute what? so was i, it I that think serious? it's kind of good huh was, was it that serious where you're gonna be out yeah, for yeah it's pretty serious it's, it's pretty serious so i um yeah, so I, I went into this last fight. That's if you see this fight, you'll see I'm pretty sloppy. Even I got the job done, but it was sloppy because I first of all I was trying to get it done as fast as possible because I knew I had just gotten over double ammonia and I had an injury in my shoulder. So wow. like I couldn't even throw a really a straight a straight right hand. It's coming like this, and so um, and my counters were coming because I it, the injury. So like I couldn't counter like if she had a slow jab. And she would paw it out like I, I was studying the fights, and she pawed out, and I wanted to come over the top. I couldn't, couldn't uh, react. So I, I got the job done the way I, could, I had to, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and coming into May, I mean, is there somebody you want to play? Or are you pretty much going to be sitting pretty until uh, a challenger emerges? Because they're talking about Paige versus uh, Britton Hart. You beat Britton Hart. Are you going to kind of wait that out, see how the uh, the one twenty five pound division plays out, or is there someone in your mind? That you would want to get back in the ring with as your as your comeback fight. I don't care who they give me. I'm not that kind of, I'm the fighter that fights whoever. Um, that's probably been a problem of mine <laughs> because they know that <laughs> they know I'm just gonna do whatever the hell they want. You know what I mean? Because right. I'm that person. But um, I, I just want the fights because when I prepare, I prepare extremely hard. Like I, I'm like. I'm a very dedicated, disciplined person, so I'm grind, 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 grind. So if they don't give me someone up to my level, it's just kind of like I wasted my grind almost. Like, 
you know, and, and I'm not going to ever like, no matter what opponent they have in front of me, I'm always going to train hard. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. care if I know I can beat them or I know that they, whatever, it just, uh, that doesn't change for me because if I change my ethic in one camp, then it's going to trickle on into my other ones. And so when I do fight that beast, I'm going to be, you know, kind of like acting like the last camp. So I just know that I got to keep my levels high all the time, no matter who I'm fighting. Right. Um, I, I hope I'm I don't by the time, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No. What are you saying? I'm so no, no. sorry. No, I don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and I hope uh, when you do come back, uh, which is obviously going to be May, that things are going to be calmed down now and like they can have crowds back in and, you know, you yeah. coming off a uh, double, double ammonia. I, I hope the game is back to normal or at least some semblance of normal. So, you know, there's no yeah. risk of getting sick because that's a, that's a big deterrent too. Uh, you know, training camp can't be like how the usual training camp was. So you're just going to get that much more better talent if things get back to normal, you know? Right. That's what happened. I, I got ready for uh, a previous opponent for a whole year almost a whole year and um, got canceled three in a row and I just got wait for each one of those. So like, I basically, in my mind, my body went through three camps without fighting. So I broke down, broke, broke down, broke down. And by the time the real fight came, um, I was already broke down. And then I ended up getting COVID, double pneumonia. Um, and then I got that injury and I think, and it was right after I got over the COVID, uh, Double ammonia four weeks out from this last fight, and they I was like, released from the hospital four weeks, and they're like, my girl was like, wait, fight? I was like, I just had a year of preparation. I'm fine. I don't care. Like I knew the opponent I had, I was gonna be fine. Like I already, knew, I know, you know. So, and I knew I had this injury. I was like, I could beat her with double ammonia and whatever I had. I already knew it. So no offense to her, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, there's levels to this. So um, yeah, I just. I just, my body broke down and um, I didn't, and there was no, there was no break. Cause then they're like, okay, you're gonna fight June or uh, March. Oh, to fight July. Oh no, you're gonna fight August. No, okay, now it's September 11th. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and I just, I just do what I gotta do. There's no, there's no, um, it's nobody's fault. This COVID thing, this, it's not David Feldman's fault. It's not BKFC, it's nobody's fault. This is worldwide. This is we're all suffering from this. So I don't hold anybody uh, like it's nobody's fault. You know, so I just got to keep going. We just got to keep going, keep pushing through and getting ready for the next or like I'm glad I did. Like I'm, I'm healing myself right now because it's COVID. Like I, we're going to have to wait back to it could be there could be another cancellation. We don't know what's going to happen. We have no we, we don't know what's going to happen. It's all this new uh, what, what, what is it, what's it called? vaccine, whatever. I call uh, yeah, antidote. Yeah, I call them antidotes. I'm like, that. when an antidote comes out, <laughs> so whatever. It's like a jab in the arm. <laughs> I'm like, whatever these antidotes, I mean, vaccines, whatever they are, come out, then, you know, then we're going to have to wait probably like five months, another five months to see how it does, right? For people. And yeah. people are not going to trust it until other people do it. So it's, I think the end of next year is when we're going to get back to normal, like, you know, ish. Right. So I'm just, I'm just healing. I'm just going to heal. I'm going to give back um, where I can help people that deserve it. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, that's it. I, I, I'm enjoying like sitting back, not kind of enjoying. I'm trying to brainwash myself. I'm enjoying doing sitting back <laughs> because right. I'm in it. So I have to like mentally adjust out of beast mode, you know, um, and take a seat back and then work on my mental game, work on, uh, like I said, helping everybody else and kind of generating more money for the, for my house. You know what I mean? Cool. And uh, is your game plan staying with BKFC or do you want to make the switch a rule like how Paige did? Do you want to like, go back into MMA, maybe dabble in that a little bit? Or is the game plan staying BKFC, finishing out your career and possibly opening up your own gym, becoming a coach? What, what's the what's your trajectory yeah. like for you? Yeah, I want to stay. I don't want to go anywhere else. BKFC is the, the best combat sport in the world. Like, this is, if they would have had this 10 years ago, this would have been where I stayed. I don't need to do anything else. I love boxing. Boxing is amazing. Right. So, it's boxing with no gloves, and it's, it's different. It's very different. Um, but it's still boxing, you know? So, uh, I love this. My fight IQ has grown so much. Um, the promotion's great. I get paid great. Um, I don't. I don't need to go anywhere else. I take care of her, you know? Yeah. 
And, and how long was it? Okay. Then I, and, I, and I'll open a gym. And I'm definitely going to open a gym, probably with my brother um, and maybe some other guys. I don't know. We're, we're, we're doing some talking right now about um, oh, it's a good game plan. Yeah. Oh, it was a good game plan. And how was the transition like? Uh, because you obviously you worked your entire career with mixed martial arts gloves, boxing gloves, uh, now bare knuckle. I mean, I got hit with all three, and they all suck the same to me. So, but what was the biggest transition like? And how long did it take you to transition from kickboxing, mixed martial arts to bare knuckle fighting? Like, did you just discover bare knuckle fighting, or did David give you a call and say, "Hey, come aboard and train for this fight"? Like, what what was the transition like? Oh. So what happened was I had my last fight with Karina Rodriguez in MMA, and I feel like her boxing kind of like edged out the fight and like it was a really close fight but i feel like her boxing because I, I was a muay thai fighter so you yeah. know muay thai fighters don't, the hands aren't the greatest right <laughs> we get hard as shit but it's not like brah, 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 like angle yeah. it, it, it's just basically let's see who hits harder and can take the most punishment <laughs> so um so i feel like that that hurt me in that fight so i went to gil martinez for boxing and i was working on my boxing and found out that I didn't realize I didn't, the, the, the level change of hands, uh, how different like boxing is and like the level, the speed, the, the, my God, the angles, the footwork, the head movement, how um, important it is and how, like I was sparring 14 year old or 14 year old boys that I had to really fight them like they're like okay you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be with my 14 year old 13 year old you know guys and i'm like the disrespect like what like for real and then i went in there so i'm like okay i'm not gonna really like because in boy tie and mma like if they're like 13 14 like i'm not hitting them that hard like they're not that, that skill level so i went in there and they just started ripping me dude and i'm like Dude, yeah. don't fight this kid right now. Like, for real, fight this kid. He's going to knock me. <laughs> I'm not even joking, dude. So, like, <laughs> I fell in love with it. I felt I was getting schooled by kids, dude. Like, counter, boom, 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 boom. Like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? The right now? Old. Like, and that set me home, like, questioning my life, dude. <laughs> like, what the hell? You like, don't like that <laughs> well, it, it, it's awesome though, and the and the work ethic, I love it. um the cardio that I gained, the my body's like the best it's ever been. I'm in the healthiest condition I've ever been doing boxing. Um, just I love it, man. So like I was just at uh, Gil Martinez's gym, and then I got a, a phone call. I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was Nate or I don't I forgot who it was, but they said, "Do you want to do a bare knuckle fight?" And I'm like. You know, we get messages like the fighter, like people oh, yeah. talking shit and tell them saying random stuff. So, I could say any who want to sell you their geese and great quality yeah, products. Yeah, so I was like, very <laughs> boxing, really? Okay. Like, yeah, just like, what is this, Kimbo Slice's homie or what? You know what I mean? So, um, I didn't really believe it at first. Then I saw the design back. And then I believed it. Yeah. So, and that, so that makes me understand now, like why they bring in the names they do, because then it legitimizes it. You know what I mean? So you know, so that's how I believe that it was real and like legit. So that's what brought me in, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I, I want to fight that though. Right. And they're like, okay, well we'll see. You know, and they went back after she kept ducking duck me, dude. So like that's why I'm sick of fight, like trying to chase these fighters that think they're all hard and they've been in the UFC and they think they're the best. They ain't the best. Dude. They just, they just look good, ish. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, they run, they run. You're not gonna chase Paige like and talk about shit to her about her and get more enemies. Like, why am I gonna get make her an enemy when she never gonna fight me? Right. Like, and, there's and, no point to it, you know. Yeah, and. and I, I see. I, I like how what Dave Feldman is doing because he's building up stars. Like he's building yeah. up his own homegrown stars. Like you obviously have a huge fan base. There's plenty of fighters with huge fan bases. And you know, on that coin, I don't think any of these fighters coming over from the UFC and giving them millions is really necessary. Considering David knows how to build stars, you know how to build yourself. 
and market yourself. And obviously you're a star and you have a, you have a huge following. Like, but on the same token too, I can see it from maybe Paige's point of view and a lot of these UFC the Street Fighters point of view and boxers point of view. Like you want to throw like 20 million over to fucking Mike Tyson to come over to Darren Uncle Fighting. Like I, I oh, see it yeah. from other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I see it from a lot of fighters' point of views where they want to come over now to BKFC and, and challenge right. themselves. But I, you know, from my point of view, you guys are doing a great job anyway. Dave's doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You can, yeah. BKFC can survive just based on the talent that they have already, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, dude, I told uh, Feldman, I, I hit him, I text him when I, I seen that Mike Tyson going around that he signed him or whatever. And I was like, bro, if you have him on the show, I will fight for free on that one. <laughs> like really? I won't, I do, yeah. I have a test there for you to ask him. I'm talking, he's like, I might take you up on that. I was like, I swear to God, have me on that show. I will fight for free, just because, dude. Yeah. Just like for, for exposure. One, exposure to Mike Tyson is a god to me. <laughs> like I, I absolutely don't fan girl anybody, dude. Like <laughs> there's one person in the world, and it's Mike Tyson, dude. I love yeah. like Tyler. Oh, Tyler been on too, like. That guy, I went, so two years ago, you know, uh, fighters, um, there's not that many uh, bare knuckle fighters. So I was like, how the hell am I supposed to study bare knuckle fighting? Oh, wait, right. same here. Oh, what's up? She, um, so I was um, uh, trying to study, like, how where, where I can get the techniques. What? How do I do this? Like, it, there's got to be a different way to fight. And you know, the back in the day stuff, it's kind of like looking for something more in our day. And then I saw Tyler Goodjohn, and I've been studying him for for, for a long time. And, yeah. dude, I'm so happy he's in this promotion now. Dude, yeah. he's, he's a fucking hell of a guy, dude. And he's, I mean, they work hard, him and uh, Mark. Um, they work really hard, and their work ethic's great. So, like, I, I love being around them. You know what I mean? They're here in Vegas. And, um, but the guy, he's going to be fighting on Friday, Tyler, and it's going to be a dope-ass show. He, like... He's good. He's going to do well in the promotion. Just and he's fighting against uh, Crazy Horse, which Crazy Horse, yeah. Crazy Horse is, is a crazy individual. I, I remember like back in the day where he got into a fight with the entire Shooter Box clan and he got into like a fist fight with Vanderlei Silva. Like there's a screw loose with Cra Crazy Horse. So that's going to be fireworks oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's crazy, man. I, I try, <laughs> I try to hold, hold, hold a conversation with the guy and it's just like, Whoo! like, <laughs> Well, hey, what's up, bro? That's all I say now. What's up, dude? Like, because there's no holding conversations like that. You know what I mean? Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and is, there anybody, is there anybody who would want to fight from, like, boxing or, like, UFC if they would decide to come over? Like, if, if you could pick someone, like, cherry pick your next opponent, because obviously you sit on your throne. Oh, hey, I'll fight this person, this person. Who would you want to fight? I like, like, the Mass Rano. You know, really? um, like, um, I w that's a fight that I really want. I've been, I've, been, I've been like kind of saying her name out respectively. I really respect her skills. I respect her tenacity. I respect her little, little swag, little her little attitude. You know what I mean? She's from uh, Brooklyn, New York. I'm from the I'm from the other side. I'm from San Jose, California. The Bay Area is all like East Coast, West Coast. Let's see, let's see who's harder. Let's see who's tougher. Let's see who got it. You know what I mean? And she's a, she's a great athlete. Um, very dedicated. Uh, I think it would be an fight, dude. And it's just South Park. I don't care. I don't care if it's South Park or not, but um, I think it would be a dope fight. I think she'd be able to, um, she'd give me a fight. You know what I mean? She'd give me a real good, hard, like, I'm going to prepare that fight, like, no other fight. You know what I mean? Also, I would fight Nunez. You don't knock her out, bro. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. Call it out. I'm, I'm going to move. I'm gonna move up. Well, I, I need to win so I can call her out. So I need to get, you know, they need to put me put me in some more fights and get some great knockouts and be like, you ain't shit. You know what I mean? Come over here yeah. and maybe mess with her ego a little bit because I know she can be the physical so I can play with that and try and get her over, you know? I would love to knock her out, dude. I would you love guys, to. I know I can't. You guys, like, have very good, like, as far as measures measurements are concerned and, and fighters in the pocket like you guys have great extension you guys have good yeah. ring awareness where you are yeah. how close you are to the uh the opponent like you guys yeah. are very good at like measuring up opponents full extension and punches like you know i, I that would be a great fight actually you versus you yeah she's she's a little bit she's not much taller than me i've met her before she's not much taller than me um she's, she's a bit longer than me she has reach on me but 
I fight guys all that's all I really spar is like bigger dudes than me. So I'm used to dealing with that. You know, so I I know I, it would be if I get caught, it's gonna be like I gotta be careful with her too. I know she's super powerful. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But does she have the hands for me? No. Hell no. She ain't got them hands. So I'm gonna see everything she throws. She ain't slick. She just comes in and hits you hard. You know what I mean? That's why. That's another thing. It's like, oh, she's the greatest. But right. she's very good. She's very good. But I'm talking about technical boxing, like and going in there and with a bare knuckle and being able to take that, and give it back. It's gonna be. It's good. It's a game changer, you know. So I, I know. But in MMA, like, I don't move up too in weight. So I, like, I want to. If they don't have anything for me, one twenty five, I'm gonna move up, dude. Because one twenty five is a big cut for me. Like, right. You know. And then. Cut and. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry for interrupting you again. Don't, oh, pardon my enthusiasm, by the way. But also no, Amanda no, no, Nunez. No, no. I'm sorry. But Amanda Nunez also has a lot of weapons to work with, too, in mixed martial arts. So she can get off her punches, and people don't want to rush into the pocket either because also if you take it into the ground, she's a Brazilian yeah, jiu-jitsu black belt. So exactly. plenty of threats. Go, her going to bare-knuckle fighting, and I know people look at me like I'm insane, like, oh, Amanda Nunez versus uh, Christine because right now Amanda Nunez is, is on fire in mixed martial arts. Right. But I think it would be an entirely different ballgame if she came over and fought you in burn knuckle fighting because she won't have those and, weapons on the ground and everything. Keep people at bay. And, and if, if I get enough to get her attention, you know what I'm saying? Like to get more attention in, in my, what I'm doing, then I'm going to be able to get fights like that. You know what I mean? Right. And I know David can afford that. You know what I mean? And pay for her to come over. You know what I'm saying? And it would be awesome dude, because I wouldn't do it. And it would be a good fight. It's not like it's just yeah. going to be like uh, she's going to come in and run me over. It's going to be a, like, I'm not going down easy. If you knock me down, you guys know I'm going to get right back and I'm, I'm going to knock her down. Or I'm going to, you know, come. I'm just going to have to sleep. You know I'm saying, I, even if I break, break my hand, I broke my hand in the, in the first round to kick her off a jab. I, I, was, I was landing it hard, but I still went back in the second round and did what I do with my right. You know what I mean? Right. So, and it's a torn, you know what I mean? So, it, I'm the type of fighter that needs to use me to get these crazy fights because, I mean, I'm at a this big girl, you know, and yeah. um, it's a crazy fight for me to take because I'm, cause I'm not that big. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, but I'll take it and I'll, I'll work, uh, get to put some weight on me and I won't have to cut. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going to be faster than her. You know, so I, there's just a lot, a lot of things that um, play in my favor. And, too, and you know, and so before we let you go, we have one more question from a fan. Yeah. Um, who was your favorite fighter growing up, and what fighter got you into the sport? Honestly, when I was growing up, I, I didn't watch fighting. I didn't know I was fighting on the streets. So I, I was like, a, I was a little troublemaker. I was like doing other things when I was a kid. So. Um, I was fighting. I was on the street and doing that. So I was my favorite. No, my brother my favorite fighter. All right, <laughs> actually, like, okay. William Faria. That was my favorite party, fighter. Um. Uh, but no, I, when I started getting into fighting and stuff like that. Um, it was just it was uh, Mike Tyson and Chris Cyborg. So Chris Cyborg okay. got me, got my mind to be like, oh wait, we can do this. Like, okay, let me do this and make money. Let me do this and be a fighter, a professional fighter. So Chris really uh, made it reality. Yeah, and that's a good fighter to look up to, especially in females MMA. I mean, she was the first made a bet with Gina Carano. Uh, I believe it was Strike Force, uh, 2009. Uh, before that, you know, the only time you could see females MMA where they actually marketed was like Smack Girl in Japan and way back in the day. Like, yeah, I'm glad the sport has evolved now. And you know, Chris Iberg is still going to be fucking dangerous anywhere she goes. But um, yeah. before we let you go. Um, any place we can find you, uh, where, where do you train out of, or uh, where are you doing coaching so people can sign up? Uh, where can we find you? Shout outs, sponsors, I leave before you. All right, thank you. Um, right now I'm training with Gil Martinez. Um, I am training people out of DLS boxing. I, um, let's see, my Instagram is at Christine Faria. My, um, Facebook is, uh, Christine Faria. My fan page is uh, at bare knuckle, bare knuckle, damn, I'm not, I'm, 
just go to my regular Facebook. I don't even use my fan page. So uh, yeah. my, my yeah. Um, um, I want to give shout out to my sponsors, uh, Rude, um, Dead Farms, and the Outlaws uh, CBD company. Cool. Awesome. And, and someone's in the. Dave Feldman, thank you guys for having me on. Awesome. And someone wants to say hello. She's in the lobby. We're going to let her in. Matt. Oh, I didn't know I wanted to say hello. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi to my homie. Hey, what's up, girl? What's up, girl? Looking forward to seeing you. Looking forward to seeing you. Oh, what's up, mama? Gina. <laughs> hey, you. I know she didn't recognize me. Like, I have no makeup on. I'm tired as fuck. I've been working doubles at work, fucking training my ass. I'm fucking I'm tired. I look like shit. Like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. But uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> what's up, bro? I know you're killing the game. I know you're killing the game. Yeah, you're killing it. You're killing it every day, man. I just see any of your posts and I feel like a scrub fucking day in and day out. Nah, 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 man. Nah. You, make, you made me want to go do crunches and shit. Like, just look at one of your training videos. Oh, God, it's so funny. Uh, I hope they get you a uh, good title fight or something coming up here for you. That belt's just sitting there and that shit's yours and kind of kind of shitty. Shitty, shitty about that whole ordeal, you know, for those of you guys that didn't know, man, she's supposed to have that rematch and, you know, you know, double take it, take it back, had a questionable decision first time, unfortunately, you know, with, you know, judges fucking tallies and numbers shit didn't fucking add up at the end and, you know, she wants your belt back and it's just fucking sitting there now and that's her shit, so I really hope they, uh, they find you something, somebody, somebody worthy because I know you don't fight bombs either, so... And uh, and I just I just hope you just ain't gotta wait a while. You know what I mean? I was looking forward yeah. to seeing you compete. Nah, it's all good. You know, I'm just, I'm just waiting. You know, my time will come. You know, and I'll get my back. You know. I don't know. But I can't wait to see you fight. I can't wait to see you fight, you know. though. I'm going. Hey, man, that fucking rice cream of wheat. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Hey, it's good iron though. Right. <laughs> you won't be able to tell from my pale ass face, but I don't live in Las Vegas. So. All right. Well, I can't wait to see both of you guys in Biloxi. The, and, uh, we got, what was that? We do, so I can't wait to see both of you guys in the Biloxi, but we got to wrap the show up. So we're going to uh, get some fa. You want to get some fa? You go to the IP casino, you go to the second floor, and go all the way yeah, to the left. Okay. And I got the best hey. fucking fa. Oh. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. Like number three, number one, congratulations on all your success. Great careers from both of you. I can't wait to see you fight, Sheena. And I can't wait to see you on Misfit. You guys are the best, especially the best. I'll be good, there. man. I'll have Misfit there, man. I can't, I can't, I can't lose. She be, she's there yelling at me. <laughs> she is too, man. She mean. She gets in my ass. You doing? You eating right? All right, you go run today. Get your ass up. All right, let's go. Let's go. She be be a great fucking coach. She's oh yeah, awesome. she's awesome. She's awesome. I appreciate you. I appreciate her. So you know, glad we got somebody like her in the division. Everybody, I mean, I don't care who the fuck, who the fuck. Everybody that's fought for BKFC can fucking definitely admire, respect, and you know, look up to Misfit because man, she grinder, she grinder, she tough, and uh, you know, you know, she's good people. So thanks for not being a dick. World full of dicks. Love you. <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you so much for coming on the show, right. Misfit and Sheena Stark. Thank you so much. Right. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Thanks. I love those guys. Yep. Both of them. Fucking awesome. All the, B all the BKFC people are great. Like, Yeah. I, I love – and that's what I was alluding to, too. Uh, Christine uh, absolutely is marketable. I mean, she's going to get that belt back. She's number one. She's sitting on the throne. She's sitting on the cusp right now. She's going she's gonna to get that belt back. And for people that are just tuning in, you know, Christine, you know, she, she went to a questionable decision. Uh, that was her only loss in BKFC. You know, she's going to get that win back. Her, her, she looks phenomenal. She's a, she's a fucking buzzsaw. You know, everyone, she's, she's a big problem in the 125 pound division BKFC. So I'm looking forward to seeing her fight again, which is, she said, May. So hopefully uh, we'll see how things play out. Maybe uh, Paige can get past a, uh, uh, Britain Hart, we're talking about Britain Hart, but I hope uh, she gets past Britain Hart so we can make that money fight happen because that is the money fight. I think Christina wins hands down uh, because you know she, Christina has a, a way about her where she'll she'll bring you into dark dark waters, and I don't think Paige is ready for that, especially in her what's going to probably be her second or third fight. 
it, when we get to May, you know, Christine's going to be absolutely a problem and she's going to get that belt back. So, and she know it's going to have a banger fight December, December 11th. That's going to be a great card. So shout out to both of them. Yep, Honor I, having I, the show. Honor. My only, my only disappointment to that whole BKFC card is that uh, you won't be there. No. Yeah. I, I wish I could be there, but we're crazy, especially during the holidays, but I'll get up there and uh, we're talking about uh, Pancras. So we're working on that project and especially me doing commentating. So a lot of shit happening. And the television show, too, Miseducation MMA, second episode. A bunch of delays because of script rewrites. So, you know, a lot on my plate. A lot on my plate, but I will definitely make it out to BKFC and cheer these absolutely fucking phenomenal athletes on. So I, I, the, the trip is the inevitable. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> I'm sure. At some point you'll be down. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, brother. So anybody, what, what's on? what's in store for Wednesday and Thursday show, my friend? Ah. Uh. You would ask. Let me yeah. pull the old, old scheduler up. While we're doing that, I, I do want to thank uh, Junger Nutrition for sponsoring us, as well as Goat Combat Agency. Great agency. And Goat actually represents Sheena Star. It's a great a agency, and you know they really care about the fighters. They are well, very. Nice she's actually. Uh, uh, you're talking about Sheena. She's actually. Uh, she she's a. Uh, she fights for Goat Combat. She that's her management company. Correct. She's yeah. with. So, yeah. So, go management. Definitely putting these uh, these great fighters in the right direction. And big shout out to Goat Management and Duranger Nutrition. I got my own samples, and soon I'm gonna be coming out with my own commercial for Duranger <laughs> Nutrition. And you guys are gonna laugh your panties off. I promise. <laughs> well, I'm having trouble pulling the calendar up. Uh, okay. I know. Okay, pertain, pertain Heart is coming on. Um, And I think and, and when uh, when she comes on, we got to talk about that, especially her. Uh, I, I think they're talking about Paige versus her. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the fight. That's the fight they're going to make. I think so. You, was it who? Retain and who? I think it's going to be Paige versus uh, versus Hart. I think that's what they're talking about. I, I think, I mean, <laughs> I was at the uh, Miami event and, she blew her a kiss, and that's where it all started happening. But I don't yeah. know if uh, I don't know if it, I don't know if it actually got scheduled. Uh, and then, so yeah, Bertain Hart will be on at 16th, and then uh, Gustavo Lopez, just coming off a UFC win, will be on the Thursday show for, for the 17th. Works for me, brother. So, any last words? Any parting words? Holy shit! They just booked Floyd Mayweather versus Jake Paul. Yo, I I don't know who booked these fights. But whatever drugs they're on, call me, okay? I'll buy your finest hash. Send me a call because I want to know how fucking stoned you were to think that Bookie Mayweather versus Jake Paul was a good idea. No, is, is, that, is, is that a serious fight? It's a serious fight. Mayweather just announced it. Listen. Now, you, I, now you, know, you know I defended the whole uh, Jake versus basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm out. I'm out on this one. This is it's stupid. Same fucking coin, though. I mean, Jake Paul is not. Guy. It's not. If they would have placed him with, you know, some some uprising, the next the next fight after, uh, you know, somebody also that doesn't fight, the next fight should be somebody that actually does fight. That's you know got a few fights under his belt, and he should work his way up. Well, this is the same argument I had last week. Hold on, I'm gonna pop up the name because I I just wanna. Hold on. I'm popping up the name right now, but this is going to go to my point. Lyle Alzado. That guy played for the Oakland Raiders. He went to fight Muhammad Ali, and it was a freak show fight. Nobody bought it. Nobody considered it any more than just an exhibition celebrity boxing bullshit match back in the 70s, 80s, whenever they fought. You know, I. That's a, I that's a professional a fighter. fighter. That's a professional fighter versus a football nope. player. Nobody. I mean, just because you have a name, you're still a nobody in the boxing yeah, game. At the end of the day, though, Jake Paul, you know, he's trained for three years and he gets to fight an and Olympic bronze fight, medalist. Fight and amateur, you know, somebody just turning pro. Put Jake in the fucking amateurs or put him in a lower. Why That's is he making millions? He should, he, should be, he should be somebody's first pro fight. 
No, no, that's not how the rankings work. When you're O and O, like, oh my God, and you don't share a car with Mike Tyson if you're O and O. It just doesn't happen. Co-main yeah. event with Mike Tyson that would have never happened in the '80s, '90s, or early early 2000s. That's fucking blasphemy. Unbelievable. I mean, the, the, the well, I'm getting I just, know, I just know that there, there's and always room. For, there's always room for a freak show. No, no, it wasn't cool in Pride. It wasn't. They had they had freak show fights. It was called celebrity boxing. Vanilla Ice box somebody. Fucking Flavor Flay box somebody. I think that's all it is. Yeah, but why are we gonna make this legitimate? Why are we gonna give it legitimacy? Jake it Paul. Is, we all knew it was a freak show. You you knew from the, the title of it it was a freak show. Yeah, how I know a loud doc from complication from steroid abuse. I mean, they should have been like, okay, and here's the main event, and here's the freak show. That's what they should have called. it. Oh my fucking lord! Fuck me in the beard. This is a travesty, a travesty. Mayweather, an Olympic bronze medalist in the '96 Olympics, who did the amateurs, amassed a very impressive record, fought his first fight in. And by the way, here's a little factoid, useless information. Guess who was Floyd Money Mayweather's very first sponsor? Dana White. You could see it on the back of his uh, warm up when he fought. He fought in the parking lot of a Las Vegas, I think, casino or bar or whatnot. But that's how far back they go. So, small world after all. Anywho, going back to my original point, Jake Paul should be on celebrity boxing. But now, celebrity boxing, this is like vanilla fucking ice. If he was a YouTube celebrity, instead of being on fucking celebrity boxing, now he's a part of a legitimate card. They're going to be part of a legitimate card. Are you sharing the ring with a fucking Olympic world champion? Legitimate, 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 legitimate boxing match was a was an exhibition. Wait, what's up? It was just an exhibition. So between who? Between uh, Floyd or uh, Mike Tyson and uh, Roy? Yeah, but they earned it. They're in their fifties, multiple time world champions, boxing hall mm. of famers, greatest of all time. Yeah, you know, Jake Paul should be. I, I did enjoy it. I'm just saying. If Jake Paul wanted to be a part of that event, and it happens in any generation, Jake Paul would be in the stands watching. It's absolutely absurd that Jake Paul is a he a headline marquee name selling tickets, and he only been trained for three years. He only has, what, two, three fights under his belt? Like He's fighting against a future Hall of Famer and one of the greatest of all time, uh, Floyd Mayweather. I was about to say Mom Ali, but it's, it, it's fucking a farce. It's, it's bullshit. Boxing's in trouble. They're deleting the sport. Boxing's been in trouble. Oh, my God. Holy shit. I mean, I, I haven't watched a boxing match, like I said, since Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather. Like, that was the last one. I was like, no, I'm done. I watched uh, Danny Gar Garcia's fight last night. Woo! That was crazy. Boxing still has talent. And, and I, I guess I did watch – I guess I did watch the Conor McGregor – Mayweather fight. Boxing doesn't need a talent injection. They need a marketing injection. They need all these promoters that run their own promotions, fucking Oscar De La Hoya's bullshit and Mayweather's thing and Don King and whoever. They need to put their differences aside. DC needs to do some fucking serious work and invest their money where they're going to make the most money long term, and that's marketing fighters. Mike Tyson, they absolutely market the fuck out of Mike Tyson. Plus, Nassim Hamed, Morgan to the moon. Roy Jones Jr., Hopkins, Tony, uh, uh, Tavar, uh, uh, Antonio Tarver, uh, Barrera, uh, Mick, uh, you know, Mickey Ward, you know, they, Gotti. They, they, knew, they know how to market fighters. They have proved it in the past. That's why we're still talking to them and not talking about today's modern-day talent. They, boxing does not need a talent injection of YouTube stars. They need a marketing injection to market talented fighters. Period. This is bullshit. This is well, he's got some serious competition with MMA and bare knuckle and everything else that's going Thank on. you, Howie. You should have been on the prelim if that. Howie knows what he's talking about. Thank God. I love our fucking – I love the people that listen in. They're actually – they're my kind of people. God, I love you, Howie. Look, am I not your kind of people? Of course you are. But <laughs> Howie knows fighting. You know fighting too, but like – you're like, oh, Greg Paul is a great idea. He brought in more fights than Mike Tyson. What? I, mean, I understand where you're coming from, man. You're, you're a purist. You 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 live and breathe 
I'm talking about from an entertainment, new eyes on the the, the sport type, and you know, it's not dumb. Uh, di disagree, agree to disagree, I guess. All the so, undercards, all the undercards probably are happy it, it happened. So. No, there are more talented fighters on the undercard. Sure. There are more, there are better fights on the undercard. And they got they got more eyes on them because of it. No, the the only thing that was shown, I mean, they showed it for free on uh, uh, Trilla, but it wasn't on the main card. So Jake Paul took up a spot for a boxing star that's going to actually do something with his career. Or they, wouldn't show, or they wouldn't have showed that either. <sighs> okay. Neither here or there. Let's wrap up the show. Let's wrap it up like a Christmas present. I think you're going to need some more drinks. No, no. I'm, I'm drinking cola. No alcohol. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Anywho. So thank you very much for joining us for the Fight Mixer. Jake Paul versus CM Punk. Jake. That is fucking genius. Two guys that nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But two guys, <laughs> Jake Paul, CM Punk, you know, put them on celebrity boxing, celebrity MMA. CM Punk, I, I support Jake Paul and CM Punk fighting boxing, mixed martial maybe, maybe we just need to put it on fight mixer boxing. <laughs> Dude. No. No. Not at all. I support... Jake Paul should be involved with boxing. I, I, I'm like Brad Tootie. I think anyone can cook, anyone can box, or anybody can fight. So I'm like Brad Tootie when it comes to that. It, it's in our DNA. It's fucking passed down. It's in our genes that we can defend ourselves, we can fight. Excuse me, I'm all gassy. I have no qualms about CM Punk and Jake Paul fighting. But they should start the Warriors journey just like everybody else did. We just had Christine on. 12-0 and 0, uh, kickboxing record. 3-0 amateurs, going to Evicta, then going to Bare Knuckle Fighting. She did the Warriors journey. She went through the shit, and now she's at the top. CM Punk and Jake Paul did not make that journey. They're doing it for money. They're doing it for clout. They're doing it for television. They're not doing it for the love of the game. And if you disagree with me, then let's put on a fight, a UFC fight that nobody, there's no pay-per-view. And you're not allowed to post on Instagram your training videos. You're not allowed to do interviews or anything like that. You are you have to do the same thing that Fighters have done 06, 07, 08, 09 without social media besides MySpace and fight for the love of the game. Do they fight? No. You know why they don't fight? Because all they care about is fucking themselves. They don't care about the sport. They're doing it for clout. Bottom line. Put them in celebrity boxing where people that are looking for clout, clout, you know, that's where they go. So. Any rebuttal? What's that? Any rebuttal? I'm waiting for it. You ready? Oh, you want, oh, oh, okay. We're wrapping up. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching the Fight Mixer. We'll see you Wednesday and Thursday this week. Peace out, Cub Scout. I'll see you on the next round. Peace. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.